Hey everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about the drug Warfarin, also known as Coumadin. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Warfarin belongs to the anticoagulant drug classification. Let's quickly break down what that means. So, coagulation is the process by which a liquid, in this case our blood, forms into a thicker gel-like consistency. Coagulated blood is how blood clots are formed. Now, in many cases, we need our blood to clot. For instance, if you get injured, even something small like a paper cut, you need your blood to clot in order to stop the bleeding. However, there are some cases in which blood clotting can be harmful to the body, for example with heart attacks. And in those cases, we may require an anticoagulant, like warfarin, to help reduce the amount of blood clotting. So again, warfarin is an anticoagulant, so it slows down the coagulation of blood. Now let's take a closer look at how warfarin achieves its goal of anticoagulation. The way that warfarin works is by inhibiting certain coagulation factors in our blood. Coagulation factors are proteins that help to control the amount of clotting in our blood. So if warfarin can inhibit some of those coagulation factors, it can help reduce clotting. Some of these coagulation factors rely on vitamin K and are sometimes known as the vitamin K dependent coagulation factors. This means that they are dependent on or require vitamin K in order to assist in blood clotting. However, if the body doesn't have as much vitamin K available for these factors, then they can't function. So the way that warfarin works is by inhibiting the synthesis of vitamin K in the body. And essentially, less vitamin K equals less clotting. To be a bit more specific, there are actually 12 different coagulation factors in the body, and the vitamin K-dependent coagulation factors are numbers 2, 7, 9, and 10. And just to reiterate, warfarin inhibits these coagulation factors. So we briefly mentioned one of the uses of anticoagulants like warfarin, which was for heart attacks. And essentially, warfarin can be used to help prevent various unwanted clotting, often prescribed to those who are already at risk for developing unwanted blood clots. So it can be used to help prevent heart attacks, strokes, pulmonary embolisms, and more. In terms of side effects, it's most important to remember that warfarin does not only slow down unwanted blood clotting, it also slows down the clotting that we want and need. So like we mentioned before, if you have some sort of cut or wound, it will take longer for that area to clot and stop bleeding. This can lead to an increase in bruising, nosebleeds, and more. There are many other possible side effects of warfarin, just some of which include nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. Due to the fact that warfarin slows down clotting and increases bleeding, warfarin is contraindicated in someone who is actively bleeding, whether internal or external. Warfarin is also contraindicated in those who are taking other medications that may cause bleeding, such as aspirin or heparin, and those with some types of blood disorders. Warfarin is also contraindicated during pregnancy, as it can lead to birth defects or, of course, bleeding problems. To reduce the risk of bleeding, it is very important to teach patients to use electric razors rather than manual when shaving. Also, use soft bristle toothbrushes when brushing their teeth to reduce gum bleeding, and to be extra mindful of anything that can cause cuts or bruises. Elderly patients especially will likely need a fall assessment because a fall can cause much more damage if the patient is taking warfarin. If, for example, a patient received too much warfarin than intended, one of the antidotes is simply vitamin K. Remember, warfarin works by decreasing the amount of vitamin K in the body. So if we want to reverse the effects of warfarin, we can give vitamin K. It is not the fastest option in emergency situations, but it is an option. One thing that's very important to monitor when someone is taking warfarin is something called INR, which is short for International Normalized Ratio. INR is a blood test used to monitor the effects of warfarin. It measures how long it takes the patient's blood to clot. The higher the number, the longer time it takes their blood to clot, and the lower the number, the shorter time it takes their blood to clot. And because warfarin is an anticoagulant, which makes it take longer for blood to clot, warfarin raises INR. For patients who take warfarin regularly, their INR should be between about 2 to 3. 
less than two, and they may be at risk for unwanted clotting, which may lead to heart attacks, strokes, and more, and more than three, and they may be at risk for excessive bleeding. And that's about it for the basics of warfarin. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.